Hello everyone, it's Megan from KenHub here, and welcome to our tutorial on the female breast structure. During this tutorial, we'll look at the structures that make up the female breast, as well as some related and surrounding structures that you can see in this image here. So in this illustration, we can see a view of the breast from the side rather than an anterior view, and we can see structures such as the nipple, the areola, the lactiferous ducts along with the mammary glands, and the surrounding adipose tissue. We can also see the vascular supply and the underlying muscles such as pectoralis major and the intercostal muscles. Once we've discussed these structures, we'll look at some clinical notes related to the female breast, but first let me give you an introduction to the female breast. The breasts are a secondary sex characteristic of females, but are also present in a rudimentary or underdeveloped form in males. The breasts are the most prominent superficial structures in the anterior thoracic wall, especially in women. Both female and male breasts are derived from the same embryological tissues, but breasts develop more in females during puberty due to the production of estrogens, the sex hormones which stimulate breast development along with the growth hormone. One of the main functions of the female breasts is to produce and secrete milk for infants, Milk production by the female breast is known as lactation. Milk is released from the breast via the nipple, which is a small projection of skin in the middle of the breast, usually overlying the fourth intercostal space, which is this space here. The nipple is surrounded by a circular pigmented area known as the areola. The base of the breast is located from near the midline of the chest to the mid-axillary line, and from the second to sixth ribs. It overlies the pectoralis major muscle and part of the serratus anterior muscle. It also overlies the rectus sheath and the external oblique muscles. Milk is transported to the nipple by the lactiferous ducts, which we can see here highlighted in green. The lactiferous ducts are lined by columnar epithelium and are supported by myoepithelial cells. It's important to note that the female breast usually contains between 5 and 15 ducts and these ducts are only involved in milk transport. It was previously believed that the breasts contained a higher number of ducts and were also involved in milk storage. It was believed that the milk was stored in a dilation of the duct known as the lactiferous sinus. However, more recent studies have found that this is in fact incorrect. When a woman is not lactating, the lactiferous ducts are often blocked by a keratin plug which prevents bacteria from entering the ducts and therefore helps prevent infection. At the end of the lactiferous ducts, we can see clusters of alveoli, known as lobules. These lobules are considered exocrine glands of the breast, and they are the site of milk production and excretion in the breast. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.